folks. Welcome to NASA Launchpad. I'm Amber Whalen. All right, let's get started. Boundary, a line that marks the limits of an area. So a curfew, that's a boundary. In fact, parents tend to give lots of boundaries, don't they? But what objects can have boundaries too? Like the desk you're sitting at, it has to end eventually. Earth has boundaries. There's a point where Earth ends and space begins. But what about our solar system? Where does our solar system end and everything else begin? Good question. Unfortunately though, not a simple answer. The limits of our solar system are actually controlled by our sun. Now, I know this might sound pretty odd. How can our sun, which sits directly in the center of our solar system, be the cause of its boundaries? Another good question, only this one has an easier answer. Our sun is a source of lots of energy. Solar winds, ejected from the sun, race outwards in all directions through our solar system. This creates an enormous bubble-like region. We call this the heliosphere. So what's beyond the heliosphere? It's called the interstellar medium. Basically, this is the name given to all that stuff that's in space between stars. It's made up mainly of gases like hydrogen and helium. Okay, so let's stop being so solar system centric about this and take a look at the heliosphere from the other side of the bubble. Our spiraled Milky Way galaxy is home to over 100 billion stars. This includes our most favorite, the sun. The space between all these stars, or the interstellar medium, is filled with dangerous cosmic rays. So as the sun and all its planets move through the interstellar medium, the heliosphere acts as a buffer and wards off most of the harmful cosmic rays. Scientists have good evidence to support these ideas, but there are still a lot of unanswered questions, such as, where exactly are these boundaries located? What is the actual shape of this bubble that surrounds us? Does the interstellar medium affect the heliosphere differently in various places? To answer these questions and more, scientists and engineers built the Interstellar Boundary Explorer, or IBEX. Its main job will be to map out the boundaries of our solar system. Studying the originating locations of these particles will help scientists get a better understanding of our heliosphere. So IBEX was launched on October 19, 2008, but there was something pretty different about this launch. You've all seen shuttle launches before, or a rocket launch, right? Pretty amazing stuff, but very, very expensive. IBEX being the size of a bus tire was a small enough spacecraft to be launched on a Pegasus rocket. Engineers developed this rocket to launch from 40,000 feet in the air. It detaches from an airplane, free falls for about five seconds, and then takes off towards lower Earth orbit. From there, the IBEX team used an additional rocket and mounted to the bottom of their spacecraft to boost the orbit nearly all the way to the moon. I must say, technology is totally amazing. It blows my mind that scientists and engineers can build a tool that has the ability to study something hundreds of millions of miles away from us. Guess that's why they make the big bucks. Well, that's it for now. I'm Amber Whalen. Thanks for watching NASA Launchpad.